In this tutorial, we'll look at some common questions in the topic of qualitative analysis. For qualitative analysis, the important parts to the chapter would be your test for cations, your test for anions, and your test for gases. There's one small part which is the test for water, but that part is not often tested. So before we look at any questions, you really need to know very well the test for the different cations and the expected observations, the test for the different anions and gases, and the expected observations. So over here, this question, we are given a mixture of iron and zinc powder being reacted with sulfuric acid. So after the reaction, what we have would be iron 2 sulfate and zinc sulfate, both of which are soluble in water. So meaning we would have an aqueous mixture containing iron 2 ions and zinc ions. So the question now is, what happens when you add sodium hydroxide drop by drop until it is in excess? So if you know your QA well enough, that is asking you, uh, that's describing the test for cations. So you just need to describe what happens or the observations for iron 2 ions and the observation for zinc. So description will be, you will see a dirty green or green PPT insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. For zinc, you will see a white PPT soluble in excess sodium hydroxide to give a colorless solution. So how do you, for this question, you need to describe and explain. So there are two parts to the question. Next, you need to explain your observations. Green PPT is due to the formation of iron 2 hydroxide, which is your green PPT. And the white PPT is due to the forming of zinc hydroxide. Now, the dissolving of your white PPT in excess sodium hydroxide is due to the formation of a complex ion. Uh, in our syllabus, in the O-level syllabus, we don't learn about the complex ion. So there's no need for you to uh, identify or to explain what is actually happening. So the four marks would be the four points that are given in here. For this question, the question is asking you to distinguish between two acids, nitric acid and hydrochloric acid. Now, essentially the difference between the two acids would be the anions present. For nitric acid, we have nitrate and for hydrochloric acid, we have chloride. So the question is essentially asking for a test that will identify only one of the ion. And right now we can just recall, the test for nitrate is to add aluminum foil with sodium hydroxide and you warm and you will produce ammonia gas. For the test of chloride, we need to add nitric acid followed by silver nitrate. So if you look at the option, if any of the option corresponds to one of these tests, then it will be the correct answer. And over here, we are looking at silver nitrate, which will form a white PPT with hydrochloric acid, but no PPT with nitric acid. For this question, we are looking at the test for the different gases and the expected observations. So let's go through each one. For A, chlorine gas would turn your blue litmus paper red and then bleach it. So it's not correct. For aqueous ammonia, it will turn your red litmus paper blue and not red. So it's not correct as well. For oxygen, the test is it doesn't involve lime water. Lime water is for carbon dioxide. Oxygen is a glowing spleen and it will relight the glowing spleen. So the correct answer is D. For sulfur dioxide, it's actually a reducing gas and it will reduce your oxidizing agent, which is your acidified potassium manganate 7. And in the chapter of redox, we learn that it will turn from purple to colorless. 
For QA, sometimes you will be given flow charts like this, which showcases a series of tests or series of reactions, and then we are supposed to identify the unknowns. So for this question, we are given a compound Y reacting with acid to give a gas and a colorless solution. Now, since it is a compound reacting with an acid, producing a gas, immediately we know that it must be carbon dioxide and the compound must be a carbonate. The other substance that will react with an acid that to produce a gas is a metal and metals are elements and not compounds. So from there, we know that it must be a carbonate. And then how do we know what is the cation present in the carbonate is the next part where we have the salt solution and we add sodium hydroxide we get a white ppt insoluble in excess in the test for cations we learn that that means that your calcium ions are present and that would also mean that your compound y is calcium carbonate In this flow chart question, we are given iron 2 sulfate. And when we heat strongly, we get a colorless gas that turns potassium manganate 7 colorless. We have just seen this earlier. This, this tells you that it is sulfur dioxide. Then we also get a gas which has sulfur and oxygen, 40% sulfur 60 percent oxygen now you can actually perform given mass data you can actually find the empirical formula okay by converting by finding the mole ratio and if you do it you actually get sulfur trioxide so to identify a what's left is this that we have iron 2 sulfate being broken up being decomposed when you heat strongly means that you are decomposing uh, substance to give you so2 so3 so the brown solid a must be your iron 3 oxide now why is it iron 3 oxide and not iron because it's a brown solid iron is a metal it will appear as a gray or silver solid okay and a brown solid should remind you of iron 3 ions iron 3 is usually reddish brown and iron 2 is green or pale green so if we look at the arrows going down iron 2 sulfate is dissolved in water is tested with sodium hydroxide so sodium hydroxide is the test for cations the green ppt in the test for cations whether we are using sodium hydroxide or aqueous ammonia, the PPT form is always the metal hydroxide. And then on the right, we added reagent X and we saw a white PPT. That should hint to you that we are testing for the anion. The anion is sulfate, so the reagent must be your barium nitrate, which will give us the white PPT in the form of barium sulfate.